Hi, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to another KSP tutorial. Docking. Quite often one of the banes of a new KSP player is trying to get two vessels to come together to dock with each other uh, in orbit. Not one of the easier things to do, so that's what this video is going to focus itself around. Now I'm already assuming that people know how to rendezvous, that is how to get two vessels within close proximity of each other, let's say within 50 meters of each other or so. If that's what you really need a hand with, then you can check out one of my rendezvous videos. But I'm assuming that part is in hand. What we need to do is get two vessels to mate. So we're going to first need two vessels. And one of my vessels is going to be this. This is my Deep Space One that I just sort of slapped together here, some sort of herbal deep space exploration vessel and what we're going to do is we're going to dock another vessel with it in order to get it crewed so let's see here well first of all what you need obviously is going to be a docking port on this one what i chose to put in is one of these this uh, inline clampatron i think that looks good and tuck that back in there uh what you also are going to need though is a reaction control system for fine maneuvering or what we often call just RCS. So RCS is powered on monoprop. This vessel right now, well, it actually does have a little bit of monopropellant. There's a tad of it, 10 units of it, tucked away in the command capsules here. But uh, for a vessel of this size, that is definitely not going to be enough. So we're going to add a little bit of monopropellant, and I'm going to actually slip it right into this sort of service bay right here. Uh, I like hiding things in this thing. And we don't need a lot. I'm just going to use two of these um, Stratus 5 roundified it, you know you have to sort of think about what you're going to be doing with your vessel but all all you're going to be doing is docking if you're you know once with a little bit of practice you don't need a lot of monopropellant to get docking done so i think that's going to be enough for the purposes of this vessel that doesn't add too much in terms of weight now what we also need to add on are reaction control thrusters and there are a few tips to keep in mind when it comes to adding reaction control thrusters. That are these guys, they're a different one, but these are sort of the stock ones. These are the standard ones, these thruster blocks here. So we're gonna add some here. And there's a few things that you need to sort of keep in mind when you add them in. And they all have to do kind of of where the center of mass of your vehicle is. So I'm gonna put on the center of mass. There it is right there, it's nice and low. You wanna center your thrust around the center of mass. So. I'm gonna start with putting a bunch of them down here. Now, because this is such a massive vessel, I think it's gonna need quite a few of them. So I'm gonna put them as low and as far away from the center of mass as I can, which is pretty much down here. It's on four times symmetry, so that should be good. Um, you can see I put them here, but this is obviously now gonna be asymmetric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some more on this. So there's a total of eight of them. That's definitely going to be plenty, all symmetrically placed around the bottom here. The reason why you want them as far away from that center of mass as you can is so that if you're going to use this for attitude control, so you're going to be uh, yawing the vessel or pitching the vessel or rolling the vessel, keeping them away from the center of mass gives you the maximum amount of torque. You put them really close to the center of mass, you're going to get less torque out of them. So far away from the center of mass, best plan. Okay, but if I wanted to do lateral thrusting, that is thrusting sideways, either right, left, or up, down, uh, this wouldn't be good because it's going to induce torque. And when I want to just slide sideways like I'm going to be doing for docking, um, well, I don't want the vessel to start changing its attitude. So what I need to do is balance off these ones on the bottom with ones up here towards the top. So I'm going to grab some more. Now, ideally, you would love to place the same amount of thrusters about the same distance from the center of mass. That's typically coming, I don't know, just eyeballing it right around here, but that's not the best place in the world for these. The second thing you want to think about is placing them so that they are as far away out from the uh, central axis, that's the axis ring right down the middle of your vessel as possible. And these guys, you can see I put them on a narrow part of the ship, which I don't really particularly like. So what I'm going to be doing instead is placing them up as close as I can to there, but I'm going to come up about here. Now i got to be a little careful, there we go, because I do want them still to be, I don't want them to be on some sort of funky angle like that. I do want them still to be like, you know, like 
like this. Now I got eight of them down here. I only right now have four of them up here. However, these ones are a little bit further away from the center of mass, so I think they'll induce a little bit more torque than those guys will. The further away from the center of mass you are, the more torque you're gonna get per unit of thrust. So I'm gonna try. You can get into the math of all this if you really wanted to, but I'm gonna try putting six of them. For me, that's going to be probably okay. We'll give this a test in just a little bit. And the reason why you don't have to be super precise with all of this is because both the reaction wheels in KSP are kind of ridiculously strong. You have to have quite an unbalanced amount of torque in order to for the reaction wheels no longer to be able to hold your vessel steady. So you just kind of have to really be in the ballpark. So with that done, I would recommend giving this a test. The easiest way to give this a test here, I'm gonna make sure there's no crew in here. I knew you'd slide in there, Jebediah. Okay, we're gonna send this up. We're gonna start with this uncrew. We'll, we'll, the docking will be bringing up the crew. Uh, let's save this. We're gonna launch it. And what I wanna do is I wanna test it. And we're gonna do, well, we're gonna open up the cheat menu. But in my mind, this isn't really cheating because this is sort of like just, in my mind, kind of doing a simulation within the game. And all I wanna do is see how well balanced this is all going to be. There we go. Okay, so I'm not interested in actually flying this thing. I certainly have my hand on the shift key. <laughs> what I want to do is just test this thing in orbit. So we're going to push Alt and F12 to bring up our console menu, which is kind of a cheat menu. Well, we're going to go to cheats right away. And you can see here there's set an orbit. So I'm going to set an orbit. And we have some information here about what we want to set our orbit. I want to put this into a 120 kilometer circular orbit about Kerbin. Semi-major axis is the distance, the average distance of the orbit from the center of Kerbin. Now, Kerbin has a radius of 600,000 meters, so this is 686,750, so this is going to be 86,750 uh, thousand meters I can do that, above the surface of Kerbin. I would rather that be... Uh, 120 kilometers or 120,000 meters. So if I add on the 600,000 meters, that's the radius of Kerbin, that's 720,000 meters that I want my semi-major major axis to be. I want it to be circular, so the inclination is going to be, uh, eccentricity will be zero, inclination will be zero, all the rest of this stuff I'm not going to worry about. So set that orbit. Now we can close this menu. So now we're in this 120 kilometer orbit. Let's light this up, see what it looks like. Actually, look at this. Yeah, it's not right. But, uh, I don't know. I gotta open everything up. There we go. Oh, there's another one. I didn't close you. Why'd you close? Extend antenna. There we go. Now it looks good. Okay. Let's test out our RCS system. So we're going to test it out first by putting on the RCS or the SAS. Hit R for RCS, and now I'm going to try lateral thrusting. So what I'm interested in is if I thrust, for instance, in this direction right now, I am thrusting uh, in a upwards direction, up on the screen that is. I want to see if the vessel's attitude is holding steady, and you can see that it is. Same way this way, same this way, a little bit of wibble, same that way. Good. The other thing I want to test is attitude control. So. We're going to uh, do a little bit of, see how that works. It's slow, but it works. A little bit of the other way, try and compensate the other way. It's working. A little bit this way. That's all fine. We can also test rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. There we go. That way. So we are getting work all the way along. It's working. Now, if you really want to put this thing to a test, we'll let this settle itself out. Take the RCS off, or the SAS off. I keep saying RCS instead of SAS. Take the SAS off and try it without the SAS. This is the real test of how balanced this all is. Let's try again thrusting upwards. And you can see we are moving sideways. It's hard to tell in space whether you are moving sideways. The thing to notice is how, um, my attitude is not really changing, right? You can even see that on the nav ball. I'm rolling a little bit, but I'm not changing my attitude. So this is actually a really good indication that this is very well balanced. 
no real math or anything involved. This worked out fairly well. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So we're just going to revert back to the vehicle assembly building. And let's bring up my other craft that's going to rendezvous with this. Now I have a uh, craft I've had from a previous tutorial quite some time ago called the Rescue One. There it is. Very simple craft. Okay, uh, let's take away the launcher here. This is the actual, yeah, we'll get rid of that. This is the actual vehicle itself. It's gonna bring up our Kerbals. Now, the thing to notice about this vehicle is that it is much smaller. It's not going to need nearly as much in terms of reaction control system. In fact, I really strongly believe that the 30 units of monoprop in the command capsule is going to be more than enough. Now, what it does need is a docking port. So we're gonna lose the parachute here. We're gonna replace it with, oops, wrong section here. This one's where it is. We're gonna replace it with one of these. Okay, and now of course this thing is intended to bring Kerbals back down to the surface too, so we best replace our parachutes. Uh, three radial parachutes I think should suffice. So, ah, should be good enough. Alright. And let's put on our thruster blocks. Now we're not going to need anywhere near as many thruster blocks as before. In fact, I'm going to go with, you really have to have at least a minimum, here, I'll stick them down here for now, but you really need to have a minimum of four. And the reason why four is because that will give you thrust in all of the different directions. If you start to have less than four thruster blocks in total, you might end up with some problems. Now, one thing, let's look at where the, see where the center of mass is. Putting them down here is not going to be a good idea. I don't, you could put like a couple might work with this one is a couple here like this and then a couple down here like this that will that will likely be adequate and kind of work but uh, I'm gonna try and do something just a little bit different what I'm gonna do instead is put on four of them I'm gonna center them just to show you another option besides spreading them out from the center of mass is to put them actually very close to the center of mass like this there we go Let's take that center mass out on like that off. This will also work. Now what this won't give you is good um, attitude control when it comes to pitching and yawing. This is not gonna be a good system for you for that. But the reaction wheels in the command capsule are more than adequate for that aspect of it. But keeping them close to the center of mass so that the thrust, if you're just going left, right, or up, down, the thrust will be close to being in line with the center of mass. Imagine this like if I was thrusting towards the left here. Um, this will work fine. I, it won't induce hardly any torque. So this is an, another alternative. Rather than spreading them out on either side of the center of mass, to actually sort of surround the center of mass like I did here. Right. And to be honest, I'm not even going to bother testing this one. I showed you how to test. In fact, why don't we instead just hop straight out to our rendezvous? So here we are in our rescue one. We got Val, Bill, and Bob, and we're bringing them up to our vehicle here. We can see we're about 150 meters away. I've already selected it as a target. We're closing in at about two meters per second. I think I'm gonna need to sort of arrest my velocity a little bit here. Now, if you're thinking that I didn't do this legit and I simply Alt-12 my way into a rendezvous, well, shame on you. And also very perceptive of you, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> because this isn't about rendezvousing, this is about docking. So we got here as quickly and as easily as we can. Let's turn on the lights, a little bit of light here. All right. Now, as we close in on the vehicle, the first thing I want to do is get myself in fairly close. We are getting pretty close. Uh, yeah, why don't we switch over our, why don't we, uh, okay. What we got to do is we got to set our control point. We got to change it from the command capsule to the docking port. So now actually, control from here, there we go. Now our actual control point is from here. Now that actually won't make a huge difference, but it does mean that this distance indicator now is measuring it from this docking port rather than from the command capsule. Since the docking port and the command capsule actually have the same orientation, it didn't make a difference on the nav ball. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to bring myself to a little bit of a 
There we go. Pretty close to a relative stop. We're going to switch over to our other vessel because I want to do something here as well. I, w I find this simpler to arrange this docking port so that it is pointing in the normal direction. And since we are in an equatorial orbit, normal direction is north-south relative to Kerbin. The reason for that is, is because as we orbit the planet, this um, heading and actually most specifically the way we're oriented now, the pitch is going to continually change. Here, I'll show you what I mean. It'll time warp. See how this is changing all the way along as we orbit the path, pa and that's uh, as we orbit Kerbin. And that's going to be the same regardless of our orientation, except if you orient yourself perpendicular to the plane of your orbit, and that is the normal direction. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to select this docking port as my control point. Control it from there. You can see now the nav ball is completely changed because the orientation of this docking port is completely different from the command capsule. Oh, you might be noticing here I mistakenly stuck Jeb in this ship, so Jeb is along for the ride too. And so now if I put this onto the normal vector, oops, fingers in the wrong spot, there we go. You can see now that my docking port is now pointing, in this case, north. It worked just as well to point it towards the south. That looks pretty good. Now, we're also going to retract these solar panels because these solar panels are very close to our docking port and uh, we would like them to be out of the way. All right, let's get back to the vessel that's going to be doing the docking. The other thing we want to do is not have the center of mass of this vehicle as our target, but have the actual docking port as our target. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, actually anywhere in the vicinity kind of works, and just say aim the camera there, and that gets you in nice and close, so now I can easily set on the dock, docking port and say set that as a target. Now I can reset the camera and I'm back to where I was. That's the easiest way to click on that docking port. All right, let's close in our distance again. So there's our target icon, the purple icon. That is now that docking port rather than the center of mass. I would like to go a smidge north of that. So I'm actually gonna aim a little bit this way. That's pretty good. Maybe a little bit this way. There we go. So now my prograde vector is actually a little bit towards the north of my target because I do want to be north of it. And I'll spin myself around, get myself ready to start to arrest my velocity. Notice so far I've been doing everything on actually the main engine. You could also be doing this on RCS, but we know this doesn't have a lot of monoprop, so I'm saving the RCS fuel. I'm getting myself more or less generally in the vicinity of where I want to be relative to that docking port. That's getting pretty close now. So now I'm going to arrest my relative velocity for the most part. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is because this is pointing towards the north, I now know this docking port needs to be pointed due south. And with that done, I now know that these two docking ports are actually aligned, at least the planes of the two docking ports are now aligned right. This target icon is the dock. This is where I want to be. I want to get my ship to that dock port. I'm actually kind of moving in the right direction. Now I'm going to put on my RCS. I'm going to, let's see, how about thrusting a little bit this way. Actually, let's thrust a little bit forward to the H key. And I want to see, there's what I want to see. I want to see that prograde vector. If I move that, oh, this is not. There we go. RCS system is not the bestest. The reason is, is that uh, I'm getting too much thrust out of these. So I'm going to turn the thrust down on them. You can turn the thrust down on the airs. Remember, I didn't test this one. Uh, let's see here. Back up a bit. There's my retrograde vector. Ah, that is so much better. And if I have this target vector, this retro vector, and my ship vector all in a line, I'm actually moving in the right direction. Even though I'm moving backwards a little bit, but we'll deal with that in just a little bit. So that target icon should be starting to move very slowly towards my ship icon. I'm going to set my camera to here. Uh, aim camera so that I have a really nice view of all of this. There we go. Oh, and I can see I'm coming really close, so I need to bring that 
retrograde icon in. I'm also going to thrust downwards now. Until I start to see that prograde icon. There it is. Perfect. All right. And I'm going to put that prograde icon more or less be a little bit past the target icon. Now I'm moving in that right direction. I like to take this very slowly, as you can see. <laughs> And you don't, you know, you can spend some time looking at this, but to be honest, as long as this is on the target, you are actually, sh you should be moving in the right direction. I somehow feel for whatever reason that I am not. Oh, I'm doing it. It's going, it's working. It's working just fine. We're going right in there. Put it right onto the target. And boink, we are there. It was that simple. Oops, turn off the RCS. We are now docked. Okay. So I'm hoping that will help with uh, your own docking experiences. Let me know in the comments if you have your own tips on how to dock, because I think everybody sort of does this a little bit differently. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.